Today's video is going to be a little bit different. The reason that we came to Vegas was to actually visit Utah Trikes. They're not our sponsor, but we filmed this a little while ago and thought we should post it. The lighting issues that you see with the GoPro camera will be resolved after this first introduction. Hey there. Hi. Okay. Eric. Nice to meet you, Eric. I'm Harold, the sales guy. Great. I'm impressed. This place is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. We moved recently from a shop in Payson, so it's about as big as we can get. And we have a lot of fabrication things and projects that we're working on here, so cool. <laughs> the space is almost filled with the brim. Yeah, I called a couple of weeks ago and kind of gave a layout. Uh, we do technical videos. We okay. cover a lot of different kinds of scientific projects. And the last project was to mount an unusual drive system on a recumbent trike. Awesome. And we got an inexpensive, locally accessed uh, easy trike. Okay. And it worked, but we learned a lot, and now we realize that we need a much better platform to make it more stable, okay. make it faster, off-road capable, all that kind of thing. Awesome. And it looked like you guys have enough of a background that you could probably cover anything that you'd want to do. Yeah, well, we carry a wide variety of trikes and quads here, um, as you can see kind of behind us. Yeah. This is our specialty, are these fat tire quads. Um, full suspension, off-road, motorized. Uh, about as good as you can get if you're looking for something that you can pedal and take uh, on a trail or off-road. Cool. Now these are quads. Yes. We were using a trike, and we found the trike was really kind of marginally stable. It, you know, tippy, that sort of thing. Yeah. And we can't use a tadpole trike simply because of the position of our current drive system that we're playing around with. Um, the quad seems like it's, it's kind of the only way to go for us. So if we stayed with the quads, are all of them motorized or are... Not all of them. I'd say these two right here, the E-Quad RS and the Knock, they were built specifically with motorization in mind. Okay. Uh, where we do also, which we had some in our showroom, but we do also build quads off of the stock trike frames we have here. Um, our main other main quad that we do that's strictly pedal power to start off with okay. is going to be built off of this Kachek Villager frame. Uh, what we do with that, we have two options for that. Either we can do it where it's a non-fat model or just kind of road cruising. Okay. Um, what we do is we add on extension plates in the rear, then we have our own custom uh, bracket to hold the wheels and cage here. Uh, we also can build that in a fat quad. I see. So you just modify the rear end of it to make it a quad, yep. but pretty much from that point forward, that point, it's the same bike. Same trade, yeah. Okay. And what's the difference? This looks a lot lighter, but what's the difference in the um, sort of made for off road, made for motor versus the thing that's sort of generally speaking, it's only for pedal? Generally speaking, um, I'd say the easiest way to phrase it is that something that's made for off roading is going to perform well in just that off road environment. Or if you take something like the Villager, where it's initially made with just going on the road, or cruising, and you start modifying it to be off-road capable, it's going to be okay on off-road, but it's primarily going to function as a hybrid of on-road and off-road sort of view. Okay, so if you're using it in both locations, on and off, would you go with sort of the modified on-road, or would you go with dealing with the shortcomings of an off-road? I Personally, we'll probably deal with something with the shortcomings, uh, shortcomings of the off-road. Okay. Um, just because 
you never know what you're going to find when you're off-road. So having something that's still going to perform well on yeah. an on-road environment, but is going to excel in the off-road environment. Those look heavy duty. I mean, they just look like thicker pipes and heavier wheels. Are they just stronger yeah. for that reason? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, other kinds of modifications of standard bikes, or is this pretty much the only one that would be modified for a quad, the villager? Um, well, we can pretty much, the villager is where we base most of our quads off of, but we're able to also modify, I'd say something that they catch right through Ma, which is a suspension version of the villager, which right now we don't have any on the floor because they're in such high demand. Okay. Um, but the, really the only reason you want to go for that is for the suspension capability. Right. Uh, you won't be able to fold like the 559. Right. Since we have to mount that bracket, you're going to lose any okay. sort of So some of them are foldable just to make them transportable. Yeah. Certainly in our case, foldability is not meaningful because our whole process is going to make the bike so unfoldable. It's either going to have to be right. driven from where you start or on a trailer. So, <laughs> so if we went with the Dumont, you lose the foldability, but you gain suspension. Right. Only on the front, only on the back? It's going to be in the front and rear. Um, there's a cage that's right under the seat where the suspension is held on the Dumont. Okay. Um, so can you show me some of these other models? Uh, sure. That kind of still do the same sort of quad, but maybe upgrades with more features? Sure. Yeah, like I said before, these are both based off the builder frame. There's different things that we can do. This is strictly a fat tire tray. Okay. Um, and this is that road cap four that I was talking about. Right. Uh, you can actually get a really good view of that rear end cage that we have for that axle assembly back there. And that's similar to what we're going to do for all of our quads. You have a more custom built for the not a wheelchair quad frame right. that we do. That's right. going to be the base of the And that still has the suspension on the back? This doesn't. Okay. Yeah, since the frame itself does not have any sort of compatible manufacturer suspension, and we haven't been able to make anything reliable right. enough to work with this frame. Right. Okay. We just put suspension on the ones that we work, that okay. we make in shop. I think work suspension well. is going to be important. Uh, Absolutely. Because once we take our engine off, I mean, these yeah. are cheap. Once we take our engine off, we decide we're going to do another project, or I decide this is my bike. I'd like to have something that I can take off road, and the suspension is going to make a big Not difference. Not throwing you around. No, no. And when we're driving these things, uh, if you did see the video, the only thing that kept us from going over 40 miles an hour was the person. Like they just said, I'm afraid. <laughs> so clearly, these things could be drawn, driven to pretty high speeds with our current engine and suspension on a little pothole. Mm -hmm. well, you know, now nah, you need a suspension. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Eric. Chandler, shop manager. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Harold gave us uh, sort of an intro and sort of the first things that we needed to know, but it became pretty clear that we're going to be needing something more custom. Okay. And he said, you got to talk to Chandler to kind of get an idea. So I don't really don't know how this is done. Can you start me from the bottom up and educate me in yeah. what you do and how it's done? Yeah, so we'll start here, kind of explain uh, some of the models we have. We have this. This is my personal. It started out as a rig, the not a wheelchair that you might have heard from Jerry Rig, everything. Yeah. Um, it was an old design and we ended up having a weakness in the frame. The frame broke and they sent it back. We gave the guy a new one. So I repaired this one, and I've just been collecting parts from other builds. Um, but this is kind of the base quad that we have. Um, I don't have pedals on mine, a crank set yet, because I'm just collecting parts. But this is the, not a wheelchair, but a pedal version. Okay. So it's not just for uh, paraplegic or... And when the frame broke, learning that is the one that then you made for the new, the customer the repair yeah is it now modified with that knowledge and yeah mind? absolutely okay. yeah we haven't had a single one break um we've got great welders um we have a great process um gussets in every spot we need um, yeah even your little repair brackets got some pretty decent welding yeah yeah yet. that silver one the front of it started breaking off so we got a new one um i have a great welder obviously you can tell um, is almost everything on these things steel, molly, no. or aluminum? This is all 60-61 um, aluminum. Okay. Um, the main frame is extruded, 60-61, okay. and then all the other parts are just um, hand-milled, or not hand-milled, milled from another company, and 
and we weld them together. Yeah. So everything okay. front to back is 6061. Uh, the wear parts like the crank set, the gearing, the axles are all hardened steel. Okay. Um, but all the framework's aluminum, so they're right. really light. Right. And really what durable. What would this weigh right here if you put the pedals on and the, the a full A full unit, I, I want to say it was almost 100 pounds. Okay. A little over. It kind of varies because we've changed. It's been a while since I've weighed mine, but I okay. think it was a little over 100 pounds. And that includes a battery. Yeah, as yep. well one as one battery. Motor. Yep. Motor. Okay. Battery and motor. Okay. Um, this it, this is an old design. We have a hub motor in it. Okay. But the new models of the Equad, we have a mid drive under the seat. It's a little okay. bit more power, a little more torque, okay. and a little easier for everybody to work on. And when those single motors are working, is there a differential in the back where both are locked together, or are they able to um, standard, differentially? Standard with the Equad, we have it's a solid axle. Yeah. Um, but we do have what we call the diff that we've made. It's just yeah. basically two free wheels that go in so each wheel it doesn't slip when you're riding right but when you power it powers both wheels but when you're coasting around a turn that one s spins a little slower and like a normal all of that applies whether you're using muscle power or yeah. electric power yep. it doesn't matter downstream yep yeah everything goes through the motor so you can use the motor and not pedal or you can pedal through the motor and the motor has different levels of assist okay so you can turn it off and just use all your power or you can crank up the assist and make it a little easier for you a I lot of our riders um, use the bike and they're like, yeah, I could ride 10 miles a day, and they get really tired, and I can only do a mile a day. But with right. the motor, they can do 10 miles again because right. they're not using full all yeah. their power. They're using the motor to help them. Cool. Um, but mine, I don't have a chain, so I'm just full throttle. I'm just a gearhead. I like yeah, right. cars and hot rods, so I just yeah, want right. power and go. Right. It's a, it's a bike, but kinda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, what the heck is that over there? So this is the same thing as this. Essentially, this is our new production or uh, prototype. Is the side by side. Plug. Okay. So it's the same thing, they're just tied together. So if you have a little kid, or you have somebody that can't quite ride by themselves, somebody has special needs, or they physically can't, they can ride with you. Huh. Um, so this side here, the driver does all the steering and controls all the motors. These are just for grabbing. And this is just holding on, but this side has its own gear set. So if you have a kid, you can turn I the gears way down. They can help, but they don't have to really help at all because the driver does all everything else. How does that work if one guy's got the, the gears and is sort of determining the speed of the bike, the other person just has to gear into what's going to work with them? Yeah, it's, the way it's pretty much set up, I can ride this all by myself with nobody on it, right. and it rides just fine because we don't have the axles connected to Correct. the back. Um, but obviously if I'm pedaling in a high gear and then this is really low, that person's really not going to be doing much. Right. They have to but, find you with yeah, the gears. Yeah. Okay. But basically you set them together, then you and your friend can ride at the same time. But it's basically somebody wants to ride with you. We call our social tandem because you're yeah. side by side, you can talk rather than being front back. Is this a one-off prototype just to demonstrate your skills or is this something you're going to try to actually make? This is something we, we plan to um, produce. We've sold one because a customer asked about it. We yeah. built a custom for them and we're like, yeah. hey, that's a great idea. Right. So we built two at the same time so we can keep our prototype. Oh, that's a good so idea. There's essentially is a prototype, but we've worked all the kinks out. It's a perfect running unit before yeah. we gave it to them. This one, we haven't painted it because we keep uh, modifying the design, changing right. it, making it better. Okay. Um, Okay. And then what's the one that you, you brought another example out of? So. This one, this is a longer version, started out as our film quad. So it's just like mine. Now you said this is film quad? Yeah, our film quad. So this is where we film our videos on YouTube. You see us following a guy riding a trike, this is what yeah. we're riding. Oh. So this is basically a longer version of the not a wheelchair. Yeah. So there's no pedaling, it's just motor. So the guy in the front is just focusing on riding. Right. And the guy in the back is facing backwards so he can ride backwards. He's payload, he does nothing other yep. than sitting, He's filming. sitting filming. Um, I'm working on a design right now to make a big gimbal arm that hooks to the track or the quad so we can reach all around or film in front. It's all gonna be, yeah. So this is how we do our videos. So some of the videos that I've seen, or many of them, are actually filmed from this. Yeah, we have another one that was basically just like mine, but it's kind of hard for one person to ride and film Correct. safely. Yeah. So we've made this um, just to make it a little easier. So the guy in the back just focuses on the camera. Kind of neat. Yeah. So this, and it's also just a fun one to play with. We have another one where um, the rider's in the back facing forward. Yeah. But that one's still in prototype mode. We're so trying like to fighter jet pilot. Yeah. yeah. We're trying to make it so that the back rider does all the steering and power. But right. we're still in the process of figuring out geometry for steering. Okay. So you could put like a kid in the front or if you have um, like a special needs 
person that has a special chair. Right. We're gonna make it so you can adapt. The kind of like paramotor pilots will be the ones actually sitting in the yeah. back. Yeah. It's yeah. Essentially, that's kind of our idea, fighter yeah. pilot style. Right. Um, so this is just a longer version. Um, now, in all of these cases, I'm seeing suspension here. That's obvious. Yeah. Is suspension sometimes put in back or? It always has suspension. Okay. So Pretty always much independent the suspension. E-quad, the E-Quad has an option for rigid spindles or suspension. Most of the time people offer the suspension, um, but the rear is always suspended. Okay. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but we've got two shocks just in the back. Um, I can see them, yeah. Yeah, okay. they're just like a bicycle shock. They're adjustable, and then we have a track bar to keep everything straight. Okay, and adjustable um, meaning for travel or for weight or kind of for both? Um, it's mostly uh, rebound and weight, so if you have a lot more weight, you tighten up the okay. springs. If you don't have as much weight, it'll be really stiff. You can soften it up. Got it. So, okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Now, uh, I'd like to at some point ride you yeah. know, some of these absolutely. to get a feel for it, but can you see a little bit of like how this is done? Yeah, yep, okay. absolutely. Take volume in the shop. It's a little loud, we could probably tell the guys to be quiet for a minute. All right. So, walking in right here, this is our like receiving area and our shipping. So, all the parts come in here, and then we send them up the elevator into our inventory. Um, there's not much with the quads that are upstairs, everything's from us down here, so we won't go up there. Um, but everything we build gets boxed up here, and then it ends up in a box like this and goes out the door. So, this is the first area. This is huge. How many bites? Right, squad. Do you do a year? And a lot that I've lost count. I think we probably do like quad in general, probably 40 or 50 months. Strike over a hundred. I don't really wow. have exact numbers, but they go they come in and out so fast that so I've lost track. So your total sales in units are like in the thousands. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we're selling a lot through the year. I don't even, I can't even tell you numbers, but I know it's a lot. Yeah, wow. And we've been fighting a lot of um, supply chain issues. Yeah. Some of our manufacturers can get us parts, and now yeah. everyone's catching up, and we're just booming now. Cranking we're just really out. finally cranking them out. Okay. So, yeah, Lead so the this way. is our shipping area. And we Obviously, we're a fab shop, so we've got a couple other projects we're doing, so that's why it's a little messy. And so this isn't for like a this giant is, fight? No, no. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Maybe the future. So you can see here, this is our this is our aluminum stock. You can see we've got our extruded tubing and then all our other tubing. On the rack over yep. there, hundreds and hundreds of pieces. Yep. And in the last two years, we've only been here for about two years in this building. We okay. originally were in Payson in a building that was maybe a quarter the size of this. Okay. And this everything production-wise was done in that little storefront. Wow. So we're working on collecting machines. We got a new a CNC tubing cutter, so okay. you just punch it in, cuts it out, but for now we just manually cut everything. We got a cold cut saw, bandsaw, uh, we have a CNC mill over in the corner. Um, a lot of stuff we outsource. We have all the designs are refined. We can just send it out and have somebody else make thousands of them. So you have it because you can do maybe prototypes or small yeah. runs or exactly. mods or repairs. Yeah, modifications. We do a lot of prototyping and once we figure out it actually works, then we send the design out and have it done. Okay. And then a lot of one-off jobs require yeah. some kind of custom milling. Okay. So, yeah. Um, the next step over here, this is our welding area. So we have it set up um, kind of like rigging. We can come over here. All right. So we have like this table right here. This is our jig one table. This is our permanent jig that we never move. Okay. The frame starts out as that. So we have a box of parts, kind of all the tubing. And then, so that's jig one. And then Graham over here, that's our extra welder. He does all the uh, jig two and then does all the final welding. So just to repeat that, because this is kind of important, although this looks like you just laid this down, yeah. this never yep. moves, other than a few parts All of the We have our little our spacers, our clamps, but everything is set, so every frame is the same, start to finish. And we have it set up for a standard frame, and then we also offer an XL frame. That's okay. about a few inches longer, a few inches wider. So this jig will do both of them, it's just longer at the end. I got it. So okay. that's how we get our consistency. Me and him as a team, we both weld. I weld jig one, he weld jig two. We're okay. doing at least three or four frames a day where we're trying wow. to get caught up. But pretty much, we guarantee we'll have one frame a day okay. ready to go to paint. Okay. So, so once it's welded up, do you then just sort of 
sandblast it, clean it? How do you prepare it yeah. for paint? So we sandblast it. I'll take you over there. We have a sandblaster. We sandblast everything with aluminum oxide. It gives us a perfect uh, gritty finish for the powder yeah. coat to stick to, and then we powder coat it in-house. Okay. Every part that we have, we powder coat, unless we get it anodized from a separate company. Why but, would anybody anodize versus powder coat? I mean, is there any value to doing it that way? Or? Um, the problem with powder coating is it's a coating, so it makes everything a mil or two or oh. three thicker, depending on what color you do. If you do a candy coat, it could be almost five millimeters thicker. Okay. So with tight clearances we have on some parts, anodizing is just the way to go. Anodizing basically changes the very first layer of the metal into the color that you want. So right. it's not making it any thicker, it's just changing the color of it. Chemically so there's changing. some anodized parts yeah. in every part. Yeah. Okay, and yep. most the color most, coat for the... Yeah, all the framework, anything that's not, doesn't have to be high tolerance clearance. Got it. Paint it, so. Okay. Yeah, so after we weld them, we go here on this rack so the painter knows that they're ready to go. So this is a finished frame. As you see, just, that's all that the framework is. You can see how simple it is, but it's really rigid and robust. Those are good welds. Yeah. Yeah, we, we take real high seriousness and welding. Yeah. Obviously, we've had a couple breaks in the past, but we've learned from our mistakes and made it stronger. Yeah. Added guesses where we need it, done triple passes where we need it. Yeah. Um, and just, we wanted to look at it. It's a, it's a pricey product, and we wanted to look as good as it costs. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of this, so we just cut the tubing out, and then all these pieces here are just machined, um, outsourced, and then they're all ready to go. Right, and all of that's the result of the jig. Yep. Because of the jig, it's always the same every time. Okay. So we'll go over here by the power pedal. And you have to speak up a little bit more. Yeah. So this right here in our corner, this is our sandblaster. This is where we do all our sandblasting. We have a big machine. We can blast all day and we never run out of air pressure or sand because it's all contained in the room. We're, oh, the sand is yeah. behind the in door. The, in the room, yeah, okay. that whole room is a sand blaster. So is the guy inside of there like covered with any kind of, you know, gas mask or whatever? Yeah, yeah, he's got a full suit. It's like a leather suit with protection on the arm. He's got a full helmet with a robe that covers all of his extremities and then gloves and boots. So he's fully encapsulated it in here. Okay. Um, you don't want any of that aluminum oxide on your skin. It's kind of like fiberglass that makes you itchy. It oh, it's not just on. abrading your skin, but dust on your skin yeah. with itch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so okay. he's all covered and it's in that room, so it keeps it really uh, concealed in that room, doesn't make as much of a mess. Okay, so, all right. And then, so after it's blasted, we'll take it over here to powder coat. So we've got these big parts. We just hang it up by wire. And then, um, for those that aren't familiar with powder coating, uh, basically it uh, uses positive and negative magnetic field in a way. We hook a negative a ground to this and the gun's positively charged so that all the powder coming out will stick to the metal. And that's how we get a nice even coat. Um, so, so it pulls the paint, It right? pulls right to it. So it's not oh. just like falling on it, it's pulling to it because it's trying to get to the negative from okay. positive. Um, so that way, like, it's not just powder sticking to it, it's magnetically charged, so when it hits a bump, it doesn't just fall off. It's on oh. there pretty good, so we can get it in the oven and then bake. Uh, but there's a lot of different colors and a lot of science behind how long to bake and what color to do what. We just go off the manufacturer spec on the box, uh, but most frames, about 25 minutes for a full bake. Okay. We do a candy, we have to do a base, half bake, and then we do a candy and then a full bake. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of different it's science. Like yeah, exactly. Where, where do you bake them? We got a big oven right here. I don't know if we have anything in it right now, but... You can see it's a pretty big oven. Wow, you can feel the heat coming yeah. out of there. It's uh, about 375 right now. That's our base, what we bake everything with, but it can go up to 500 degrees. If we you can make to. lasagna. Yeah. We always make jokes. Every time my alarm goes off, I'm like, oh, my cake's done. Yeah. <laughs> So that just stays hot all the time because you're putting bikes in so frequently? Yeah, I, first thing in the morning, I turn it on, get it warmed up, and then it's just on all day, and we just rotate in and out. We paint, goes in, and it comes out the other side. How long do you bake it? It varies on color, but about 25 minutes for a full frame. Oh, wow. Okay. And then smaller parts, obviously less time, thicker parts, more time. Wow, it's so, fast. Yeah, nice. it's a pretty quick 15 minute cool down and you're ready to build. 
So what kind of colors can you get? Um, I got a little card over here. You can see we have a whole shelf of colors, but this is our kind of our cheat sheet it explains for the guys so they know what colors we have. You know, we got different color whites, silvers, greens, a bunch of different candies. Um, all of these that say candy on it have a silver base coat and then a candy flare because it's translucent. That's how you get that. Oh, okay. That like candy color. So it seems to have depth. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have other ones that are called, um, I can't remember what they call it, but when you put a clear coat on it, it changes dormant. Okay. It's a dormant color. So you'll spray it on and you don't see anything. You're like, what the heck? First time I did it, I was confused. I like, no color. I bake it in the oven, comes out, still no color. But when you put a clear coat on it, the clear coat meshes with the color and then the color changes. Wow. And you could watch it. You can't see in our oven, but if you could watch it after 20 minutes, all of a sudden it's purple. Wow. So we got some cool colors. Yeah. Obviously we can do any color you want. Yeah. You go on the website. Um, this is kind of through the years of what people wanted and kind of the colors we offer. But you go cool. online, pick a color, we can order it and paint it. So. Cool. So after it's painted, then we take it over here in our build area. We'll show you that now. So this is our area. You see, this is uh, what I was telling you about the e quad. Okay. So we've got this mid drive motor here instead of a hub motor in the back. And then this one, obviously, this has 26 by 4 inch wheels okay. so it makes everything that much higher and taller and this also is an XL frame it's gonna okay. be hard to tell because it's just slightly different it's okay it's longer. not hugely different no it's just, okay. yeah a couple inches longer a couple inches wider um, same with the rear end the rear end's a little bit wider why a hub motor versus a mid-frame motor like is there some reason um these just have a little bit more power okay. output um and then the hub motor we just did it mostly for um accessibility a little easier for people to work with the mid-drive oh okay. the hub motor everything's inside and it's hard to okay. diagnose problems or troubleshoot with this there's a lot of external components that you can diagnose so if the brakes okay. stop working the speed sensor's not working the mid-drive it's all external hub okay. motor it's internal so it's like Send me your motor, let me diagnose it, and then I'll rebuild it if I can. Okay. But with these, they can just buy a part and try it themselves. So oh. just a little bit easier. All right. And it gives us the option to put better gearing. Like this one specifically has a roll-off. This is a 14 speed internally geared hub okay. instead of like a 10 speed external gear, what we used to do on the hub motors. What's so the advantage of internal is uh, um, the gear itself, not the motor part of it. Maintenance is the biggest thing. Okay. Um, it's all internal, you don't have to worry about a cassette replacing uh, a gear set. Um, you just change the oil every couple of years depending on how much you ride it. And okay. they're just a little more durable anyway. Because okay. it's all just a big beefy gearbox. More set. compact or about the same? Um, it's a little more compact. Um, these are built so that you can put them in a wheel. Okay. And then obviously we don't need a wheel back here. We just have, we just right. mount it up like normal. So. But it adds cost, that's more expensive. Yeah, this version. is definitely like top of the line gear set. And that's yeah. what we use base model on the e quad now just because it's a great product. We just want the best gearing possible. You can obviously downgrade if you don't want to buy it. You can get a 10 speed, but if you ever try roll off, you're going to want the roll off. Okay. That's kind of how it goes. All right. Fair enough. We'll try it. And then you can see um, on mine, mine was a, used to be a, not a wheelchair, so the bumper was on top. This one's on the bottom, so brings everything down a little bit more in line, so it's more comfortable to pedal. Okay. Mine is just. I'm used to it. I'm fine with it. Okay. Um, yeah. But this just makes it a little more comfortable. And then this is just a bash bar to protect your feet in case you hit a tree or a wall. Okay. Um, this steering is sort of unusual to me. I'm used to just seeing the direct steering of the yeah. bike. And these articulated kind of connections. Um, is this something that is built sort of invented it or somebody um we obviously we didn't invent indirect steering we've kind of made it work for us we've made obviously this design we've made nobody had this on the shelf for us to try out okay um we just made it work with the handlebars because usually on a trike you have direct steering it just turns the spindle but right. with the power and the weight of these things it's kind of hard this okay. just gives you a lot more leverage over the steering okay they originally designed to help people with disability they they're not going to have the full range of motion that I do most of the time, gotcha. so it just makes it a little easier. Okay. And they're adjustable. And the biggest part, one feature I really like is, it has a quick disconnect here. You wanna see that? It's a quick connect, disconnect ball joint. So you can take the tie rod off, and now you can roll the handlebar all the way out of the way. 
Oh. So if you need to lift somebody into it, you don't right. have to like try to put them from the front or like get around the handlebar. So that's just another feature we That's included. in the field. That's not just for somebody who's assembling it to make it easier to assemble. Yeah. You would do this, this is setting it up to yep. run it. So it just has this little slip. So then you just hook it up to that ball joint. So it just makes the handlebar come off real easy. Or if you're loading it in a car, you can put the handlebars down, take the seat off, slide it in. Flat. Yeah, mine, okay. I can fit mine in my uh, Toyota 4Runner. Wow. Pull the seats down, take the seat off, and the handlebars down, and it'll fold right in the back. Oh, that's cool. So That's a nice feature. Yeah, so you can see we got a couple here in process. Um, this is what the rig has, just a bumper and foot plates, no pedal. Yeah. You strap your feet down in it. Okay. Um, and you can see this has the bumper on top. Okay. Yeah, so this is where we build them. We got a whole shelf over there of painted frames ready to be built. Got it. Um, now with these uh, sort of no pedal option versions, 5% of what you're selling of these or half of them? You know, or they're just um, planning on an electric vehicle. I would I would say we sell more of the rig for sure. Yeah. Uh, I would probably say every eight or ten of these we sell one. Okay. So this is a big bulk of our sales. Yeah. This is our biggest queue right now. This is, they take a little bit longer to price. Yeah. And part shortages are slowly getting caught up. But yeah. Okay. So this is definitely our majority besides strikes. Yeah, I would probably say maybe 10% U quads, 20% this, 80% tracks. Yeah, and then we go and then okay. in between there's small parts. We ship a lot of small parts. Um, yeah, that's the operation of the quads. What else? Okay, I think this is good. Go for it. Stay there for a sec. <laughs> Just keep going, this is good. This is about the best part. 